place like this would have any robots. Hi there. Hi. Do you have any robots here? I don't think so. How about if I show you these definitions? See if you change your mind. So do any of those definitions change your mind? Yes, I believe all of these definitions uh, could be applied here. Oh, can you show me something you think fits uh, the definitions? Sure. Uh, we can look at this dishwasher. Okay, and what is it about the dishwasher that makes it a robot? Uh, well, it, uh, it does all of its actions automatically. Um, and you program it up here to make it do what you want to do. And then after that, once you shut the door, it will take itself through its own, through all of the cycle and complete the cycle. So how does the dishwasher compare to doing it the old fashioned human powered way? Well, it, um, uh, like your second definition where it has the ability to change something in the world around us, it, it uh, helps you save water and energy. So are there any special skills required to work this robot? Uh, nope, you just uh, load the dishwasher and uh, ask it what you want to do and then shut the door. Mm -hmm. It's pre-programmed. Excellent, thanks. And our next stop is EcoMain, a single stream recycling facility in Portland. I wonder what they have for robots. Hi, my name is Katrina Menheisen. I'm the environmental educator at EcoMain. Okay. So tell us a little bit about what it is about the recycling center that makes it qualify as a robot. Um, no humans have a hand in sorting the uh, steel and tin cans that's done by a magnet. No humans have a hand in sorting out the number one plastics that's done by puffs of air and UV light. Um, the aluminum cans are sorted out by an uh, eddy current magnet, so um, it's repelling the aluminum instead of attracting it. Um, the paper and the cardboard are sorted out by rubber stars placed a certain space apart. Um, humans are not sorting those materials. Uh, humans do sort other materials and they do take out some trash, but for the most part, the recycling facility at EcoMain is a robot because humans are not sorting a lot of it. So does it take any special skills to run any of the robots here? Well, we have various robots and it takes various levels of skill to run each. A lot of our employees that work here have gone to places like Maine Maritime Academy to get lots of training, whereas some of the uh, people that we have working here have done more vocational training. And there's always lots of training on the job for each individual robot as well. IDEX started right here in Maine. They develop diagnostics for pets, among other things. Surely they have robots. Hi, my name is Jason Sear. Um, I'm a uh, laboratory manager slash research scientist at um, IDEX Laboratories in Westbrook, Maine. This robot, um, it runs animal samples. So the veterinarians have to take blood samples that the blood tells them pretty much everything that they need to know. And then they will send that off to one of our laboratories uh, where it will then get tested um, on a robot like this. Um, we can run about 100 samples at a time. And when you think about a robot, you think it's really, really fast. But really, in this sense, it's about as fast as a human. Um, but it, uh, what it does for us is it allows us to go do more things in the lab than have to just stand here and run assays by hand all day like this does. Uh, what makes this a robot for me is really any instrument that can do a series of steps automatically that a human isn't doing. So what special skills does it take to run this robot? The simple level is if you're just a user and it's very basic, you get that kind of training on the job. It takes maybe an hour to two hours of time learning how to navigate your way through the computer screen, which uh, basically tells you step by step uh, what you need to do. Uh, and the second level is if you want to do some simple programming, uh, you can use the language that the Hamilton um, company uh, has for this particular system. Um, and then there's a third level which, would, which requires a, a, how to actually write the code. So I'm here at Masters Machines in Round Pond, Maine, and I've come to see what robots they have here. Uh, this is a robot that was built by Mainers in-house, and this uh, is checking the parts, taking digital pictures of it to sort the good ones from the bad ones. This is a CNC Swiss machine, and uh, you need to know how to program uh, in G-code and M-code and use solid model and CAM software. 
These screw machines uh, require a lot of mechanical aptitude uh, in order to run them. They require bridging the gap between the mechanical and the electrical computerized side of them. This is a robot because it, form, it performs an automated function uh, that uh, takes the place of what would normally do be done by a uh, human operator. You have to know G-code and M-code, and you have to program the robot and tell the robot what it has to do. You also have to pick the proper tools to cut the metal uh, to make the parts that you're trying to make. All, all of this requires programming knowledge, tooling knowledge, and machining, machining knowledge. Uh, the training is mostly on-the-job training when we purchase the machine. Uh, there's training that is involved. Uh, the people come on site and do training, or uh, they may learn this in school uh, before they come to work at our company. Well, after all those interviews at main businesses, I'm seeing robots everywhere. It's got me wondering things like how the definition of robot has changed over time, if there's a difference between automation and robotics. Please take your receipt. The wash is available. Please enter wash now.